all right so i think i was talking about having to have dinner with them and there was no escape man. like this fucking village they lived in it was so poor that there was no restaurants nothing like this it was the only option and every fucking dinner every meal fucking the elder goblin it looked like the motherfucking toxic avenger and shit he gonna sit right down right next to me and this fool he got like two teeth in his fucking mouth and the whole time he he gonna try to fucking talk to me in that weird ass local dialect can't understand anything he fucking saying he just spit food out of his mouth the whole fucking time normally you would think some fucking toothless goblin spitting big ass chunks of fucking food in your meal is gonna be the worst experience you're gonna have during the dinner but not here blade I mean, every fucking time they giving you fucking bowls and plates of food to eat off of and chopsticks and shit, they always dried up chunks of fucking food on it. Every fucking time. And that goddamn food was so fucking horrible, man. You wouldn't fucking believe it. I mean, normally in China, the food is so goddamn good, but here everything was fucking wretched. And I'm kind of wondering how homegirl dealing with this shit, because she living out in Hanzhou and shit. Before that, she was in Shanghai. And the food out there is fucking phenomenal. And to have to go back to this blend, unbelievable. I mean, it's like I said, it's shit like pig intestine and it's just the nastiest fucking things you can possibly imagine every motherfucking meal. Ah, oh, man. Whatever you don't eat that fucking morning, they gonna slap it back on for breakfast and, I mean, for lunch. And why don't we eat for lunch? They gonna throw it back for fucking dinner. So, you gonna eat it. That's all you gonna fucking get. Like, the only time I had two fucking meals there that was not that fucking bad. It was like a miracle. Like a fucking miracle from God. Because I was like starving to death and shit. And one day this big ass fucking truck come running down their fucking road. They ain't got no paved road. It's a fucking dirt road with big ass holes and shit in it. So, this big ass truck hitting them holes and these two fucking geese come flying out the back. They lay in the middle of the road and fucking we able to eat them for dinner. They wasn't bad. But the other meal I liked there, blood. Fucking, I remember I'm out in there like balcony thing in the top of the house. I'm smoking one of my last bowls and shit. And I see that bread truck roll up. The uncle that smoked with me and shit, the uncle I blazed with, him and fucking Bobo, they pull up in their bread truck and they got a dead dog in the back and that fucking sick motherfucker Bobo just laughing, just giggling and shit. So yeah, they pull out this dead fucking dog out the back of that truck and that Bobo got a big smile on his fucking face and I don't really think nothing of it, but I don't know what the fuck to think because motherfuckers drive really bad over there. I just assumed it was some fucking dog they ran over and fucking because they a lot of stray dogs out there, but they fucking everywhere and motherfuckers drive real bad. So I just figured I put two and two together. I don't know, but because like on an average day, I say the average Chinese driver make about 11, 12 fucking life threatening fucking driving decision you ever seen a motherfucker driving like 60 70 to an apartment complex next to a big playground a bunch of kids all running up and down the road i mean you might you might honk you might get lucky motherfucker might honk that's about as much precaution as anybody over there exercise when they fucking drive i ain't saying it's they fucking fall it's like most people ain't been driving there a long time you ain't got your moms and your dads to fucking teach you how to drive there anyway let me tell you about bobo blade because this motherfucker man don't let the fact that he got Down syndrome, and I'm pretty sure he had autism as well, don't let that fool you. This motherfucker was a cold-blooded, sociopathic, psychotic, evil, animal torturing piece of shit. He one of the most rotten motherfucking creatures I ever came across in my life, man. This motherfucker was pure evil, and I felt sorry for him at first and shit, but that changed quick, blood. That changed fucking quick, because I sized that fool up real fucking quick. I mean, that cat got dealt with a fucking bad hand in life, and... He was pretty aware he was miserable as fuck and he spent his whole life just trying to fuck with everybody else and make them as miserable as he was. Look, this motherfucker had an entire room upstairs dedicated to torturing animals. They had all kinds of traps and torture devices and shit. It was like some hills have eyes, silence of the lambs type of shit, man. Most of them animals he was torturing there was like rats and squirrels and shit. Cause them rat traps in China, they fucking designed to keep them alive. Man. I don't know why they do that. Actually, I think I probably do know why, but but anyway, I'm talking about Bobo here. And this motherfucker, but he was doing some real bad shit. That things, I ain't gonna tell you what the fuck he was doing, but it was real fucking bad. I could tell. And as soon as this motherfucker came in the room, it was like all bad. Because he just immediately, he just start fucking with everything, blood. He just start fucking with you. He gonna harass the fuck out you. He ain't gonna leave you alone. He gonna try to get in your shit. He gonna steal your shit. He gonna go through your fucking room when you ain't there. Go through your shit there. 
He stole the fucking remote for the fucking air conditioning for the heater in that room I was in. And because this motherfucker did that, I never got it back. I never had heating the whole time I was there when I slept. I had two parkas on, fucking sweater and shit. I mean, I froze anyway, blood. I fucking froze. But I feel I found out how you deal with that motherfucker later on though. Cause like one night me and homegirl, we just chilling in the fucking living room and shit, just freezing as usual. And that motherfucker stumbles in, blood, just pulling his Helen Keller shit. I don't know if you ever seen that old ass movie about Helen Keller before that lady teaches her how to do all that shit. And she just comes stumbling in a room like a fucking nutcase, blood, just snatching food out of people's plates, just stuffing her face and shit. That was just like this motherfucker. And I, my stomach just getting knots every time this fucking cat come in a room because you know it's just going to be all bad. You're going to have to deal with this piece of shit. And blood, I don't know how to put in words how fucking bad this motherfucker and that motherfucker with his fireworks, play. I think I told you before how like Chinese New Year, it's like you in a fucking war zone for like two weeks. They just going off every fucking way. In China, it don't matter. It's three, four, five, six in the fucking morning, blood. They going off. People lighting them every fucking where. And nobody gives a fuck, blood. And this ugly, dumb, retarded fucking goblin, he's setting them off. But he ain't setting them off outside. He's setting them off inside the fucking house, in the living room, every fucking where. And ain't nobody saying nothing to him. And it was a big fucking deal to me, even at first. But a couple days into it, I don't know where he got it from. But he comes back, they weren't them regular fucking firecrackers. They were these big ass motherfuckers. And they was fucking loud. They wasn't like M1000s, nothing like that. But they was fucking way bigger than regular firecrackers. And when this dumb motherfucker was lighting them off in that house, but it would make your fucking skull just rattle, man. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. I'm gonna tell you about that fucking bobo. Because as soon as that motherfucker sticks them nasty ass dick beating hands of his in them fucking sunflower seeds, homegirl strikes and she strikes fucking quick. And he ain't eating them sunflower seeds because he's hungry. He coming in there doing the fuck with us. But she got a solution for his ass real fucking quick. She like immediately spring into action. As soon as that motherfucker put his hand in that bowl, she reached back. They're like one of these, it's like a fucking dough roller. It's like this big circle fucking wooden thing. That's pretty much what it is. It's real fucking heavy, this thing. She picked this motherfucker up, like, and she bring it down on his head as hard as she possibly can. And it's fucking loud. It's like slam when she smacked that motherfucker with it. And as soon as she hit that cat with that fucking thing, he immediately starts screaming. He come running out that fucking room, blood. And I gotta be honest with you, man. That was like one of the most satisfying fucking things that entire trip that happened. Man, I wish I could explain this better, how she hit him with this fucking thing. Because this was like jaw-dropping, man. You've seen this shit happen in somebody's life. You might gasp, but she fucking hit this fool hard. Like, it's something somebody had to go to the hospital for. When she brought that thing down on that dumb motherfucker's ball-ass head. But I don't know how to... Man, it was so fucking loud, man. <laughs> but later on, I started getting real nasty with that motherfucker, too, because... I don't know, but I fucking end up running out of greens, like, later on, but then something just fucking real nasty starts coming out of me. Shit, I already cut off Uncle and shit. I wouldn't be in shady cutting that motherfucker off, because I'll smoke my resin with him and shit like that. But the shit that motherfucker did the night before, blood, was just unfucking believable So, like, the night before, he doing his usual shit. He fucking high pressure me, trying to get me to smoke some fucking herb with him and shit. And I'm down to, like, nothing at this point. So, I'm down to scrape my fucking pipe. But he welcome to that. And he down to hit that. And you ain't never smoked no resin before. You ain't got no tolerance, blood. That shit will get you fucked up. And he was high as hell, blood. And his fucking wife comes in. And his wife is like normal, but she like, I don't understand why she married this motherfucker. I mean, for real, she like a normal lady. She tries to dress herself up, wears these dresses and shit like that, does herself up. And she married this fucking drunkard, blood, like it just straight lives to get fucked up all day. So I don't see how that shit working out for her at all. But she come in there and she mad at him about something and she giving it to him. I can't understand what the fuck they're saying anyway, because they speak in that local fucking weird ass dialect. But he obviously don't like what the fuck she's saying, blood. And at some point, I don't know if the motherfucker lost face or something like that, blood. But right fucking in front of me, he straight backhands her, blood. Right across her fucking mouth, blood. Puts her to the fucking floor. Needless to say, that was some fucked up shit, blood. And they fucking completely fucked up that entire vibe and shit like that. So that was it for me and him. I never smoked with that motherfucker again after that shit. But domestic abuse in general over there, I mean, it's bad here. It's a common thing here, but... I think it's a lot more common over there, but I really fucking think it is. There ain't no fucking deterrence there like this here, man. You go beat up your fucking woman here, but you gonna go upstairs, but they gonna put you in that fucking hamburger outfit. You gonna look like fucking real bad in front of that judge. It ain't good, blood. It ain't fucking good. You gonna do time for domestic abuse, but it looks real fucking bad. But over there, nah, you beat her up real bad, you might go to jail, but 
Uh, nah, not like here, man. Not at all. I mean, maybe do push in the hospital or some cops might get involved in that shit then, but that's that's about it, but they really just keep the fuck out of it. Yeah, I'm getting sidetracked again. We'll keep up on this story. So I've been there hell of motherfucking days now, but I still got a few fucking days left before I can get home. And now I am out of every fucking thing. No more resin, nothing. So I'm freezing my ass off every day, can't eat anything I wanna fucking eat, got no internet, just bored, miserable, can't even get no action off that girl, nothing, blood, it's fucking terrible. For me, sobriety, blood, like a mild withdrawal, blood, it's fucking awful, I hate it, blood, I can't fucking stand it. So I started resorting to desperate measures at this point, and I started drinking uncle's fucking house wine. For real, man, I can put up with so much bullshit, and I could've put up with all that shit there for a long fucking time. But once I run out of flower blood, that's it, man. It's fucking over for my ass blood. I start to lose it. So like I said, I reach my fucking breaking point and I'm getting myself smashed up off that fucking wine. And just like clockwork, needless to say, it making me angry and fucking miserable because I ain't got no flower with it. And that's all I'm thinking. And for like a minute, I actually started feeling something kind of good. I started getting kind of a good fucking buzz for a change. It was kind of hitting me both ways. I was getting angry, started feeling a little bit better. And then Bobo showed back up. That motherfucker, he don't see me in there. He decide he gonna destroy my little peace and fucking solitude and quiet I got. He gonna fuck that up for me. And he got big plans for me. So Bobo sneaking up behind me. He got another one of the big ass firecrackers. And he planned on throwing right between my legs, not knowing what's going on. I'm gonna have the fucking shock of my life, blood. Gonna have to get one of them skull rattlers again, blood. These fucking things was so goddamn loud. I'm telling you that dumb motherfucker lighting them off in the house, blood. It was unfucking believable. But the tables was about to turn on that motherfucker. Because for this night, the joke's gonna be on that motherfucker. Because I don't know what was up with that firecracker guy. I don't know if it was a bad fuse or what. He just held it too long trying to creep up on me. But it went off in his fucking hand. I'm just drinking that fucking booze, my own business, and then bang, right behind me again. But right after that, there's some fucking screaming and crying blood like real fucking loud. He must not release that shit in time. And all I know is I look back, I see that screaming motherfucker running up them stairs holding his fucking hand. And I knew what happened, blood. I fucking knew. And suddenly my night just got a whole lot fucking brighter. And this cat fucked himself up bad, but he lost half his fucking pointer finger. And I'm not sure, but I think he may have ended up having to lose his fucking thumb too after this. Because I'm pretty sure that shit got infected, especially after what I did to him later on. But we'll get to that in a minute. But after that motherfucker did that to himself, nobody cared, blood. Nobody did anything to fucking help him. It was like... Nobody gave a fuck. I think this shit happened a lot over there, blood. Like, for real. Because you go to a lot of stores and shit like that. Just meet people in public in general. There are a lot of dudes missing fingers there. Like, a lot out the ordinary. The only thing I can come up with why there's so many motherfuckers in China. Like, men missing. It's usually men missing fingers. Is they got them blown off playing with fireworks, blood. It's the only fucking thing I can think of. And believe me, they lost blood. They fucking lost. You'll notice this. You ever go there, you're there for a while. You start noticing there are a lot of people, a lot of men missing fingers and shit. It's got to be why, man. I can't think of any other fucking reason why. But that stupid asshole trying to fucking get me and fuck my night up and just hurt himself. Like I said, it energized my ass. I decided that I was going to get him back right there and now. I was going to fucking get him, blood. I mean, blood, I know this sounds horrible to be fucking sitting there doing some mean shit to some retarded dude that just got his fucking fingers blown off, but... If you was there and you seen what this motherfucker did to people and me, you would understand. But still, nonetheless, I ain't saying what I did was right, because it wasn't. But I wasn't myself, man. I was in a fucking foul mood, blood. I mean, that fucking alcohol was hitting me hard, and I was getting nasty me. I mean, that cat did so much shit, like, just so much bad shit. But still in that fucking remote, making me have to freeze for, like, that damn near two fucking weeks I was there... That shit was unfucking forgivable. The thing is, he telling him all he don't know where he put it, but I think he fucking did. I think he intentionally did that shit just so I'd fucking freeze. I'm telling you, this motherfucker's life was just living just to like hurt, hurt and torment people. That's all he was about. And I decided I was gonna get him, blood. So I started creeping up them stairs. I could hear that motherfucker up there whimpering and shit. And I saw this bucket of water sitting on the top stair. Some nasty old wooden fucking bucket. It'd been there since the time I was there, blood. It was just fucking full of this nasty old green water. It looked like could have had like chicken shit on top of that water. I don't know. It was fucking nasty. So I'm creeping up on that motherfucker. He's sitting in his little animal torture room, his little animal torture chamber, his bedroom and shit. He's laying on his pissy ass mattress, just fucking feeling sorry for himself. 
and he don't know I'm coming. The only thing my drunk ass can think to do this motherfucker at that time and moment was just to dump that ice cold water on top of him. And it was ice fucking cold. The house was so cold, but there were like icicles form on top of this bucket of water. As bad as it sounded, I was probably kind of hoping he'd get an infection from his wound too from that water going on top of it. I was thinking something like that, but I'm telling you, I was fucked up, blood. I was being real mean. I was real fucking foul and angry. So once I creep up close to that motherfucker close enough, I lift that bucket up, blood. I just start dumping on that motherfucker before he even knows I'm there. And as soon as he sees my dump that water, he starts screaming. I pick that bucket up and I fucking slam it on top of his fuck. And that thing, it must have hurt like a motherfucker too, because it's a big ass heavy wooden fucking bucket. And he fucking starts running off screaming again like he always does and shit. And I'm just in this fucking torture chamber by myself and I decide I'm gonna fucking do some more. I didn't feel satisfied, I guess, with what I did to him or something like that, or just because I was in such a fucking angry rage, but. I decided I wasn't gonna let him keep doing that Jeffrey Dahmer shit he was doing, blood. And I fucking just straight just started destroying all his shit. All them little squirrel traps and rat traps that fucking sick motherfucker had. I just started smashing all that shit. There was one bird in there that was still alive. I let that motherfucker go free, but I probably should have just killed it, put it out of his fucking misery, to be honest with you. I fucking pull out my dick, but I just started pissing all over that fool's fucking nasty ass bed, blood. I thought it was funny as hell at the time, but like. I don't know, blood. This was the alcohol. I'm telling you, blood. I wouldn't fucking normally do this shit to somebody. Not somebody with disability. Anyway, blood. It's getting fucking late. I'm going to have to wrap this motherfucker up next time. But next fucking story, I'm going to finish this shit, blood. I promise you. I'm going to come to the conclusion of this long motherfucking story. And we can move on to something more interesting. I really appreciate you watching. Support me, man. Y'all motherfuckers have no idea how much you mean to me. And I know most of you can't afford to support me financially. But do what you can for me, blood. Do whatever you can. My numbers is still real fucking low, blood. So anything you can do, if you can like, subscribe, share. Do anything you can for me, blood. For real, let's make these motherfucking numbers go up. Anyway, I love you motherfuckers. Y'all have no idea what you mean to me, man. Y'all like my fucking family. And I love you guys. Have a great fucking night. Stay tuned for more Daryl Sherm stories coming soon.